Hey, YouTube. So there is one very important thing when learning to master NixOS, and that is functions. Nix has its own unique way to handle them, and they look kind of scary to beginners. In this video, I will break down Nix functions from beginner to advanced, showing you exactly how they work and why they are crucial for your NixOS setup. Let's transform those intimidating Nix expressions into something we can actually work with. Nix is a functional programming language, and that means that it relies heavily on functions to perform its operation. But let's get started with something simple. In Nix, functions are often written as anonymous functions, or you might also know that as lambdas. These are functions that don't have a name by themselves, and they are defined directly in the place they are used. So, for example, this is a Nix lambda function here, and this will look very similar to a Python lambda function here, or to an arrow function in JavaScript. And while all of these functions look very similar, you can see that the Nix function syntax is very minimal. So, in this example, I have defined a function that takes one argument that is x and it will just return x multiplied by 2. And in this case, this is a pure function definition. So in order to run it, we need to pass an argument to it. And for this, we will wrap the function definition into parentheses here and just pass it the argument 5. And when we run it, you can see this gets evaluated. To 10. And I know this is a typical example when you want to learn about functions when you have into Nix pills on the NixOS homepage, but I find these kinds of examples a little bit too abstract. So we will continue just with a function that will use strings and that's more readable and more understandable in my opinion. So here we have a very similar function. We have one argument name and the body of the function is just a string interpolation. So the output will be hello and then whatever we have passed in as name. When I run this, you can see this evaluates to hello Bob. And of course we can also pass in two different arguments. So we can change this here to hello. My name is whatever we pass in and I live in and here we give it the city argument. And now we can just pass in the second argument. So let's say we make this one New York. See that both arguments were passed into the function and the string interpolation put out the completed string down here. So this looks a little bit weird when you are used to other programming languages. And to be honest, we don't really have a function with two arguments here. What we actually have is we have a function that takes one argument, which is name, and it returns another function. And this other function takes an argument named city and produces the final string output. So basically, instead of having one functions where we have passed two arguments to, we have two nested functions. And while this structure of two nested functions looks a little bit complicated, it also has its own advantages here. The nesting of the functions allows us to do a partial application for the function. That means we can supply one argument at a time. So in order to show you, I will just make a named fun function out of it. So we will start with the let expression here and we assign the function to the name greet and we keep the exact same structure as before. And now we can call our function by its name greet and just give it two arguments, which is the name and the city again. And when we evaluate, this will evaluate to hello, my name is John and I live in New York. And that's basically exactly the same as we did before. The only difference is that we have assigned a name to the function. So it's not an anonymous function anymore and we can use it in all different places of our code. And the other thing we can do is we can just partially apply this function. So when we delete this one here and up here in the let part, we 
define something like partial and we call our greet function just with the argument of John here. Then down here, we can just call the partial and just pass in the city later on here. And as you can see, this will evaluate to the same result. But the big difference is that we kind of pre-filled the function up here with the name and then we completed the function later on in our code. And this, for example, enables us to derive specialized functions from more general ones. So for example, what we can do here is we can make a partial one where we assign greet John, and then we can just make a partial two and for instance, greet Jane in this case. And then we could just call the second partial with the argument New York. And you can see we can pre-fill the same function just with the first argument and then we can use it later on just in another context and this will give us a lot of flexibility. So the nested syntax is often very hard to read, especially when it comes to more complicated functions. And a more readable and easy way to pass multiple arguments into Nix functions is actually to use an attribute set. So what we can do here is we can change our function definition here and we just give this one argument, which is param in this case. And then we can just assign multiple attributes. So we can just make a param.name and the param.city. And now we are good to go. And when we call our function, we need to modify this a little bit. So we call our function greet and then we pass in an attribute set. So we pass in name equals John and city equals New York. And when we run our function, this will evaluate to exactly the same result. What we also can do is we can just destructure the attribute set into variable names. So we can just do like this and give it name and city. And then we can just refer to it with the regular variable name here and we can run it and it will evaluate to the exact same value here. As you can see, there are multiple ways to pass multiple arguments to a Nix function. The last one I've showed you here is the most common one you will find in a lot of NixOS configurations and Nix code. And what we can also do is we can define default parameters. For example, we can just say that for name, our default should be Bob. And for the city, our default will be Los Angeles. And then when we take out one of the arguments here and evaluate our code again, you can see that the first argument has been replaced by John and for the city that we didn't provide, we just got the default value here in this case. So thus far, we have been using functions by strictly defining arguments here. But uh, when I pass in an argument, for example, let's say we have something like favorite food here, and this equals to pizza. And when I run this function with an additional argument, this will cause an error because as you can see here, Nix will report that the greet function was called with an unexpected argument, which is favorite food in this case. And the way to make the function accept and the way to make the function accept arguments we didn't define in the first place is uh, just to use the three dots syntax after the named arguments. And now when we rerun our code again, you can see this will evaluate and will not cause any errors. But of course, this is only the first part of it. When we pass additional arguments into our function, we actually want to be able to use those extra arguments. And how you do that in Nix is with the add syntax. So what we can do here is we can just put a at person here. And what this will do is it will bind the whole attribute set to person in this case. And then we refer to our variables and then we can just 
make it person dot and then use favorite food in this case. And when I now run my function again here, you can see this will perfectly evaluate. And you can do that with as many arguments as you want. What you also could do is instead of putting the add person at the back, you could just do something like this. So you just do person and then add and run this again. And as you can see, this will do the same. So it doesn't matter if you have it in front or in the back. And usually when you look at Nick's code, it is placed in the back here. So that were the very basics of functions. Now let's have a look at two more concrete examples that you would use in a NixOS configuration, for example. Let's look at a common pattern in Nix, which is platform dependent Nix packages. So for example, when you have an attribute set definition here for different platforms, then we have each individual key representing a different computer architecture. For example, this one is for ARM processors, this one for 32-bit systems, and this one for modern 64-bit systems. And for each architecture, we have the same packages. As you can see, we have a lot of repetition here. So we got the package name three times here. And they are just minor differences in the values here in this case. And instead of writing out this manually, we can, of course, put all of this in a function and let Nix build this up for us. So I will just define a let block here. And then I can just create a variable systems, which will just contain an array of all the different systems architectures. And then I create a variable which is named for all systems equals, and then we use a function that is provided with Nix packages. So we can just refer to Nix packages dot lib dot gen attribute sets, and we pass in our systems array. And in order to use this, we will need to import Nix packages. So I define Nix packages here, and this equals import Nix packages. And what this function will do is it will output an attribute set for each member of our array here. So each of these, so each of this array values will become the key of an attribute set in this case. And of course, to get the structure I've just shown you, we need to apply a different function to all of the attribute sets that the gen attribute sets function is creating here. So we will just for now to have it a little bit easy create a dummy function here. And this will get one argument, which is system which is each of our systems here from the array. And just for now, we will just make this is system and here we refer to the past in system value here. And now we can just use our function here. So what we do here is we call the for all systems function, which is this one here. And we pass in another function that will get one argument system. And we call the dummy function with the passed in system argument here. And when we run this here, you can see this will build up the string we have defined in our dummy function here for each of the system architectures here we have in our array up here. And to get back to our original structure here, I will just create a function which is called mock packages. And then I just replace our dummy function up here with the mock packages function. So you can see this is very similar. We pass in the system and the return an attribute set, which will basically have the packages we had in our manual setup before. So when we run this here, you can see this is exactly the, st the same structure that we had before for um, our manual attribute set. So as you can see, we have achieved the exact same result we had in a very verbose way in our manual version before. Now let's have a look at another 
common next pattern here. Let's have a look at working with different files and different directories. Let's look at another common pattern in Nix working with different files and directories. So let's say I just create a new folder here and I name this one modules. And within this folder, I will just do a module one dot Nix and uh, module two dot Nix. And let's also give it a module 3.nix. And then in my functions nix here, I will just call a built-in function. And this is a function that is built into nix, so we don't need to import nix packages for that. And there's also an overview about the built-in functions of nix in the nix manual. And when we evaluate this, you can see this will spit out an array with the file names I have in my subfolder modules here. And what you can use this for is we can automatically import all the files in that folder. So we can assign this function to the value module files, and then we can just create another function here. So we assign modules here, and now we call the built-ins map function here. And the built-in map function takes two arguments. It takes a function definition as argument number one, and it takes a list that this first function argument will be applied to. So in our case, we provide a function that would take one argument, which is file in this case. And this function will output an import statement on our modules folder, and it will append the file name that is passed into the function. And this function will be applied to all of the contents of our module files here. So what that means is that each of our modules files we have in this array here is passed into this function and we will create import statements for this. And in order to test this, we need a little bit more flesh here. So we need to define some code in our modules here so we can actually see the results of the import. So I will just quickly define something here. Let's say here we put hello from module one. Here we have hello from module number two. And here we have hello from module number three. And now I head back to my main file here. And now we can just uh, call this. So for example, we can just say messages equals and then we refer to the modules here and save it. And now you can run the file and you can see this returns all of our messages. And here we have the messages from our different files here. And of course we can write that even shorter. So we can just write inherit and our modules here and this will be exactly the same output here. This pattern is great for avoiding manual imports when files are added and removed. And there you have it. We have covered the basic uh, we have covered the basics of Nix functions and we have also had a look into two real world examples that you would use in a typical NixOS configuration. But of course, this is just the beginning. You can do a lot more with Nix functions. And if you want to take your Nix skills to the next level, there are a couple of next steps you can do. So first of all, you can try these examples in your own configuration or check out some of my other videos. So for example, the NixOS Flakes playlist has 18 parts and there I go in a lot of detail when it comes to Nix Flakes and building up a whole system configuration. And of course, what you also could do and what I really encourage you is to have a look into the Nix reference manual. And as you can see, there are a lot of built-in functions here and also Nix packages has its own set of helper functions. So you don't have to write everything from scratch. There is a lot of stuff already built and ready to use for you. So that's all from me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just drop me a comment. And of course, you can also let me know what specific Nix topic you want to have covered next. So I will have a look into it and see if I can make a video out of it. So have a nice day. Bye-bye.